start this episode of Robinson Crusoe with the definition of economics. There are many definitions of economics from different point of view by different economists. So let us start the definition of economics with very very basic thing. Economics means the study of economy. Now the question is what is the meaning of economy? Economy means the system in which society makes and consumes the goods. Or you can say economics means the study of human behavior as well as to analyze how goods are made and consumed in the economy. You know in this episode, in our example, there is one man society or you can say one man economy. That one man is catching fish and growing rice and barley and making bread. So in this society or economy, only these limited items are being made by one person and being consumed by the same person. Let me remind you the meaning of society. Society means the system in which people live together. Now let's learn the meaning of want. You must have heard about the desires or wish. I wish to fly in the sky. I desire to go to Switzerland and enjoy the natural surroundings of that country. So all the statements are telling you about the wish or desire of a person or you can say the imagination of the person. But in economics, only those desires, imagination or wish which are related to goods are called want. If Robinson dreams of flying in the sky, that's not want because that's simply imagination. We cannot call it want because it's not related to any good or goods. If somebody desires to enjoy snowfall in the balcony of his home during the summer, you can't call it want. It's simply imagination. So any desire or wish that is limited to goods is called want. This is the very very basic meaning of want in economics. Be careful. The wants of human beings are unlimited. This thing can be proved in the story of this Robinson Crusoe. First, he was hungry. Now the question is why Robinson Crusoe, he catches the fish and he can satisfy his hunger. Why did he go to find the seeds for the rice and barley? And after growing rice and barley, then he started baking bread at his home. The answer is he has many desires or you can say he has many wants. Let's try to learn the meaning of consumption now. And the verb is consume. Anything that a person uses for satisfaction of want is called consumption. Consumption means to use some goods to satisfy the want. Now the question is how can the goods satisfy the want of a person? Because goods have the utility or capability to satisfy the want. This thing we have already learned it. Every person has got many wants, so he has to consume many goods. Now the question is, can a person satisfy all the wants? The answer is no, because the person cannot have unlimited goods to satisfy his wants, because the resources are limited. When I say resources or limited resources, it means everybody has got limited money, limited skills, limited time, limited energy, etc. Let's take the example of this Robinson Crusoe. He can satisfy his hunger with fish, rice, barley and bread. If he imagines to have pizza there, can he have it? No, because he doesn't have that type of oven or the ingredients to bake the pizza. Or he wishes to drive a flash car on this lonely island. Can he drive? No, because he can't arrange a car over there. So human behavior tells us that the person has always unlimited wants but unfortunately limited resources. When I say limited resources means time, money, skill, means, energy etc are the examples of resources in this story. So unlimited wants essentially mean that people never get enough. There is always something else that they would like to have like Robinson first 
He wanted to have fish, he got it. Then he arranged rice and barley, he got it. Then he wanted to have bread, he got it. Now he wanted to have pizza, can't get it. He wanted to drive a flash car on the lonely island, no, he couldn't have it. So when combined with limited resources, unlimited wants result in the fundamental problem of scarcity. And many perspectives or the concepts of economics are based on this theory. And the name of this theory is the fundamental problem of scarcity. We have already explained that the quality of goods to satisfy the wants is called utility. And we have already explained you the law of diminishing marginal utility. You must remember that in the law of diminishing marginal utility, there is only one item. If you keep on consuming the same item continuously, the utility of the additional or next unit keeps on decreasing. Now let's learn the basics of law of equi-marginal utility. In the law of equi-marginal utility, there are two goods. Let's take the example of this Robinson. Suppose there are two items available to satisfy the hunger tonight. Number one, bread and number two, grapes. So he has got two options. To satisfy his hunger, he feels that tonight he would like to have one bread and two kilograms of grapes. So he has made the combination. So in this way, he has made the combination of one bread and two kilograms of grapes because this is his preference today. Maybe the next day for the dinner, he wants to have two breads and one kilogram of the grapes. So in this way, in practical life, every person has got limited means. So he keeps on making the combination of different things to get the maximum utility or maximum satisfaction. So this is called law of equi-marginal utility. In law of equi-marginal utility, there are always two goods. To choose from but in the law of diminishing marginal utility there is only one good not two 